Hey guys, this is Nick, and it's time we finish this KDE at Work series, because I already showed you how I use KDE Plasma with its activities and its various layouts to get stuff done on my desktop, on my laptop, for work and for personal stuff. Today we're going to take a look at all the applications I use on both my devices to get stuff done. Speaking of getting stuff done, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. So this video is sponsored by Alma Linux. If you don't know about it, it's a community-owned and governed Linux distribution that aims to provide a replacement to CentOS. It's actually a one-to-one -one complete replacement for CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Alma Linux is backed by AWS, ARM, cPanel, the OSU Open Source Lab, and a lot of others. And they provide a full set of enterprise features like Secure Boot, Open SCAP, or Oval. And they also have a full line of cloud, containers, and virtual machine support with a script that allows you to migrate from another distro to Alma Linux without even rebooting. Alma Linux has recently been added to Azure, which means that you can deploy it directly from the Azure portal. But it also has implemented a worldwide mirror network, which means that whenever you are in the world, you can have the fastest update speeds and also when installing new software. So if you want to join the Alma Linux community and try it, download it, deploy it on a few servers or devices, you can just head to almalinux.org. I left the link in the description. Okay, so now let's begin with the applications I use on both my laptop and my desktop. First are the email and calendar apps. I use Kmail and Korganizer for this. These are the default on KDE and you can tell that they have older roots. They don't really look or feel super modern. So I tweaked the layout a little bit to make them fit my workflow better. On Kmail, I moved the preview pane to the right of the mail list and I hit the favorites folder and the tooltips. I also ordered the message by activity by date, threaded, so I can see if I have email that I haven't responded to for a long time. Whoops, I guess I should start working on these specifications, right? Kmail is a pain to set up. When adding an account, it won't necessarily add your inbox, your send folder or any other ones. So you have to go and manually add these through server-side subscriptions by right-clicking on the account. It's just not very user-friendly. On Care Organizer, I added my personal and channel-related calendars, as well as my work calendar, which I just manage in my own next cloud because our stuff is hosted on Zimbra and it's pretty crappy. Here again, it doesn't look super modern or fancy, and I tweaked the appearance by removing the date navigator, the to-do view, and the item viewer from the side panel. It's still not incredible, but it's at least legible. I'm also playing around with Calendar, the more recent app from the KDE team, that was meant to run on Plasma Mobile as well, but it's too basic for now. It lacks a weak view, and even though it looks better, you can clearly tell that it was meant for mobile first. Now, it's the first time that I'm ever going to complain about an app not having a menu bar, but now that I have my global menu on my desktop, I kind of want a menu to click on. I use the version supplied in the official Manjaro repos or by KDE Neon on the laptop. Now, of course, I also use a web browser, and my favorite one is Firefox. It's fast enough, it integrates well with Plasma with a dedicated extension, so my downloads use a system notification, and I can control playback from the audio applet in my top bar. It looks alright, even though you can tell it was made to look better on GTK desktops than on Qt desktops, and it also serves as my password manager, thanks to the Firefox account. I love Firefox, and whenever I dabble in another browser, I always end up going back to it. It just feels right. We also use Chromium because I need to test our website and web app in the most used rendering engine. And I also use GNOME Web when I need to check if something breaks on Safari Desktop, as they share the same engine as well. I found that I could easily reproduce bugs that we noticed on Safari inside of GNOME Web. Of course, GNOME Web, even resized to a mobile interface size, doesn't reproduce the horrible bugs of the horrible mobile interface of Safari. These web browsers are used to test our website and apps, as I've said, but also access GitLab, where we handle all of our sprints, issues, and deployment pipelines, and Confluence, which is our documentation repository. Confluence, with Jira, is probably one of the worst pieces of software I've ever used to handle documentation. Do not use that thing. I also use Firefox to access iCloud.com because most of my colleagues, developers excluded, work on Macs and use the iWork suite to create documents which are just not working well on LibreOffice or any other Office suite on Linux. At least I can open them in the browser and export them to usable formats. Chromium and GNOME Web are installed via Flatpak, 
Firefox is the version from KDE Neon's repos on the laptop, and on the desktop I use a specific version from the AUR that supports the global menu. Now I sometimes need to mock up stuff to propose graphical evolutions to our apps and websites, and for this I use GIMP. I never used Photoshop in my life, so for me it's super natural to use. It's relatively fast and simple, and the workflow of starting with the selection and then using it to draw, move, add or remove stuff is pretty well ingrained in my brain. It does lack multiple layer selection and merging and deletion, which is pretty annoying, but it's still good enough for what I need to do with it. Incidentally, that's also the app I use to make my thumbnails for the channel's video. On that note, if anybody has experience with making good YouTube thumbnails and is willing to give me a few tips and pointers, I'd love to hear them because I'm really bad at thumbnails. I never use Inkscape or any vector drawing programs because I never took the time to learn how they work. I also want to give a try to Krita as it integrates with KDE a lot better, but here again I don't really have the time to learn something new. GIMP is installed through Flatpak. Now, to manage my tasks, reminders and projects, I use Planner. Planner is, in my opinion, the best to-do list app on Linux. It has so many nice features and it stays super simple and easy to understand. You can sync it with a to-do list account as well, but not with Nextcloud for now, which is too bad. I use it for channel-related tasks as well as for my day job. It can handle sections to better separate your task inside of a project. You can add labels, flag tasks as important, display as a board or a list, add subtasks and reminders, descriptions, due dates, and it even has a keyboard shortcut for quickly creating new tasks. It will arrive in your inbox when you can sort it and further flesh it out. And as you can see, I am really bad at organizing all these tasks. I need to create sections at least, I think. Planner is just an amazing application that I really, really love using. It's available on Flatpak, and if you're looking for a native to-do list management app, you cannot do better than this one. Now, on the Office Suite side, it's a little bit trickier. I use two different ones because I haven't really been able to focus on one that I like better than the other. There is LibreOffice, which I really like, especially with the tabbed bar user interface. It's fast, it works really well, its compatibility has really improved a lot, and it's a native Linux application, so it tends to look right on any desktop, including KDE. It's also open source. It does all I need for spreadsheets, presentations, or long-form writing. It's a really nice suite. But I also use WPS Office because its compatibility with Microsoft Office formats is just better. Its interface doesn't look like it belongs to your desktop at all, and it's not open source. And there have also been concerns about it being a bit spyware at times, but out of all the options on Linux, I found it to be the one that has the best compatibility. I also use OnlyOffice from time to time, but it just doesn't click for me these days. Now, I also use LibreOffice for my personal budget and for writing my sci-fi novels. On that note, I still need to publish at least one of these instead of rereading them, proofreading them again and again and again. It it, I need to take action here. Now, as I test our apps and websites, I sometimes need to document bugs and issues, and there is literally no better way of doing that than just recording a nice little screencast. For this, I use OBS, which is definitely overkill, but I know how it works. It's already set up on both my devices, and I know that what it produces is high quality enough that it's legible and smooth. I also use it a lot for the channel, of course. OBS is installed through Flatpak. Now, for file management, I use Dolphin, the default on KDE. It's a wonderful file manager with plenty of options to make it either simple or very powerful. I tend to use it in a very simple way with a few tabs, no split view, preview panels or terminal. I like the fact that it integrates nicely with Nextcloud so I can see the sync status of files and folders and quickly copy sharing links to various files. And it's super snappy and responsive. Now I still run into a weird bug from time to time where when I download a file from Firefox and save it to the downloads folder, it doesn't show up immediately in the web in the file manager and I have to close it down and reopen it. I need to find a way to reproduce this bug accurately and then I'll report it. Now let's move on to the applications I only use on my desktop. First, there is Discord. This one I only use on the desktop because we use it to work remotely and keep in touch with my colleagues. We have our work server, which has a very basic setup, two discussion channels for general chat and dev-related chat, and three meeting rooms, one for our morning meetings, one that can be used by anyone to make their own meeting, and one that we tend to always hang out in, the dev room. We don't use any advanced features here, it's just to keep in touch, ask and answer questions, and the like. And speaking of Discord, the Linux experiment now has its new Discord server, and this time I'm the owner, so it shouldn't be weird like last time. 
Now, I don't own a webcam, so for video conferencing, I just use an Android smartphone with DroidCam. It's a small program that you install on your computer and on your Android phone, and it lets you use the cameras on the phone as a webcam. I just slot my phone in a tripod, balance that on the top of my screen, and run the program wirelessly. It works well, even though I could never get it to actually go higher than 480p resolution, even when following the various tutorials. I compiled this one myself, as the versions I found on Manjaro just refused to connect to my phone. Now, on the laptop specifically, there are two applications I use to just make my life easier. The first one is Slimbook Face. This is an app that makes use of the IR camera on my Slimbook Pro X14. It lets me replace my password with my face. Sadly, KDE's login manager doesn't support that, but every time the desktop asks me for a password, including in the terminal, I just let it scan my face, and a second later, it's done and the command can run. And that's probably not super clever of me, because if I ever make a mistake, I can't intentionally mistype my password three times to cancel it, it's just going to go straight through. It's still super practical, you know it's scanning you thanks to a small LED, and I'm really glad I enabled that. I installed it through Slimbox PPA, and it should work with any laptop that has an IR camera, basically. Now, to manage battery life on my laptop, I also installed Slimbook Battery. This is Slimbook's app to handle power profiles. I use the laptop in performance mode when it's plugged in, and in low power mode when it's not, and the balance plan I literally never use. It's simple to set up your profiles, tweak whatever you want on it, and then you get a system tray applet that you can just right-click to switch profiles. I didn't find a way to make it automatically switch to a profile depending on whether it's plugged in or not, but since it asks a password each time you change profiles, it might be inconvenient. Although, since my face is my password, it wouldn't be that terrible, I guess. This one is also installed through Slimbox PPA. And that's it for the applications I use to do my work, either on my desktop at home or on my laptop at the office. It's a pretty simple selection, and you will notice that there aren't many KDE-specific applications in there. And that's because I found, in my opinion, that KDE apps generally lagged behind other alternatives, either in terms of looks, in terms of feature selection, of, or in terms of usability. I couldn't find a replacement for Planner, for example. The Caligra Office Suite for KDE just doesn't handle various file formats correctly. And I know for GIMP there is Krita, but I, I'm just too lazy to relearn something else, so I didn't move to it. Now, to manage the channel itself, I use a bunch of other applications, which I will tell you about in another video. Now, this one was made possible by Slimbook. If you don't know about them, they're based in Valencia, Spain. They make Linux laptops and desktops for basically all budgets, all configurations. They're beautiful, they work well, they have all keyboard layouts that you might want, they ship worldwide, they're really good, I can only recommend them, so if you need a new Linux-based device, click the link in the description below. So thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, don't hesitate to like and subscribe, and if you didn't, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments. You can also support the channel by becoming a patron or a YouTube member, and you'll get access to a weekly patron cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover, and if you really don't like YouTube, I'm also on Odyssey. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!